Hello and welcome to another AGS Inspire Flip Masterclass. This week's session is on differentiation. As a teaching profession, I think we've come to a crossroads with differentiation. And I think there's lots of views out there, reports, um, articles, and things from Ofsted at the moment, actually suggesting that potentially our infatuation with differentiation as a country of, of teachers over the last 10 or 20 years has quite possibly widened the achievement gaps and not closed them. So this session is going to probably um, have more questions than answers, but it's a time for you to reflect on your practice, reflect on some of the uh, the ideas and some of the things that I'm going to talk about, and for you to then come to the session on Tuesday, uh, having reflected um, in a in a wider, bigger picture style, uh, and to then come to the session with some ideas and hopefully pick up some some tips and some practical examples which we're going to give you on Tuesday. So the main theory that I want to uh, to float today is actually about teaching to the top. And I think for too long, uh, not just in our school, but like I said, as a teaching body uh, over the last 10 or 20 years in the UK, we have been told to uh, differentiate all of our lessons to all of our different students, uh, groups of students, especially in mixed ability classes. And uh, quite often what that has done, uh, like I said, to start with, because we have, um, in some cases, probably dumbed some of the content down, um, whether in lessons or as schemes of learning and, 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 and pathways, We've actually made a lot of that work easier for those lower ability students and um, an interesting kind of concept with that is well has that now started to widen the achievement gaps if we're giving uh, our lower ability students uh, easier work or, or easier topics to do or not stretching them or or not giving them the, the the harder parts of the topic or the examination syllabus as our more stable students then are we actually putting um, you know limitations on their uh, on, on their boundaries and uh, something um, uh, Nikki Hickman said to me earlier in the week was she said you know ceilings are for rooms not for students and I think that's really important to think about that that actually if we are differentiating uh, and, and, and making that work easier for those students then we're not really doing them any favors because ultimately now with the changes to um, examinations and the GCC reforms and things that are going on those students were going to be they're going to be sitting in the same exam papers um, so it's interesting so it's a, it's a whole thought process really a process really of um, flipping differentiation on its head and um, teaching to the top and making sure that all of our lessons and all of our schemes of learning are catering for our more stable students and really pitching our lessons um, uh, you know, at, at those students and then supporting and scaffolding you know, the students underneath, you know, bringing them up to that rather than the other way around of actually, you know, um, in some cases, you know, either, either, either pitching the lesson at the, at, at the least stable and then providing extension activities for other students or the common kind of mistake and the and you know the really the kind of um, the common mistake a lot of people make with differentiation is just going right down the middle and thinking well I'll, I'll pitch the lesson to the to our middle ability students and then I'll either extend for the higher ability or I will um, I will scaffold for the lower ability and really we're then not kind of doing much for anyone um, and, and and it just kind of sits in the middle. We need to make sure then that that you know we've talked about this for a long time uh, in the school over the last few weeks and months about challenge. I think that's really important and, and when we read the uh, the new Key Stage 3 uh, Wasted Years document from Ofsted, it talks about challenge and especially challenge for Key Stage 3 students and that actually in a lot of schools, um, year 7, 8, 9 are wasted years because the work's too easy, students have done it before at Key Stage 2 and I think realistically then we need to think about our differentiation uh, and I want you to think about well what does your differentiation do? Does it cater for your more stable students? Or are you just providing extension activities? You know, are you are you are you extending from the bottom upwards? Because think about it from a, a more stable and talented student's point of view in your class. Is it engaging? Um, is it really challenging if they're just you know given extension tasks when they finish the you know the normal work all the time, um, or asked to kind of finish something else off? Or can you help the person next to you? You know, really, we, we should be making it very very challenging for those students. And then using that challenge and using that ethos of real hard work and, and, and challenge and pace to bring everyone forward. Um, and yes, we will find that we'll, you know some students will struggle with that underneath. But that's where we make sure we've got the support and scaffolding structures. And those are the differentiation strategies we're going to be looking at. Uh, about how we can use different resources, different methods of support, uh, different strategies to support those students. So they can access that work. So they are, so they are able to... Um, you know, lift any ceilings off their own achievement and, and, and really you know, reaching for the stars for those students because I think that sometimes because students have certain targets or in certain pathways or in certain groups 
we tend to um, you know dumb things down to a to a what we believe is is, is their ability and, and and their ceiling level and I, and I think we need to we need to really remove that and think well if we teach at the top and we really go for it we might find that some of these students really shine and really respond to that um, and at the same time it's fantastic for the school because obviously we've got our most able and talented kids going home saying that they're really challenged they're doing some hard work um, they, you know they're finding it really really mentally um, you know you know uh, you know stimulating I think that's great because those are the those are the students who really want to be recruiting to the school and those are the students that are going to be achieving you know the very highest grades for us so um, you know I think it's it's an interesting concept to be uh, to be thinking about as we as we move forward okay what I'd like to do then before Tuesday's session is to think about um, what I've said to take some time uh, to reflect on your own practice either be it in your classroom uh, or your faculty or, or as, a, as, a, as a whole as a school think about the idea of teaching at the top um, and, and this is not saying that you know we're going to throw differentiation out of the out of, out of the classroom completely that's not what this is about it's about just looking at differentiation and thinking well what would I want differentiation to be in my class and actually are the differentiation strategies that I've been employing for the last few years are they actually um, widening the achievement gap from the low, from the lower able to the most able in my classroom or are they actually serving to narrow those gaps um, and that's a very that's a very kind of tough thing to do and, and to, to sit back and think about but I think we all need to be doing that because if we come to the conclusion that some of our differentiation strategies are widening the gap then we really need to think about well, why are we doing those in the first place. Secondly, I'd like to bring a lesson plan with you to the session on Tuesday or a, a lesson that you're about to teach in the next few days, so maybe Wednesday or Thursday, uh, you know, the, the, the day or, the, or two days after the session. And we're going to look at giving you lots of different um, differentiation strategies to support and scaffold the, uh, the lower ability or, or, or the lesser ability students in your classroom so that we can teach at the top. And hopefully you'll be able to find that very, very useful and you'll be able to take a lot of practical strategies away with you that you'll be able to use in your lessons in the next few days. Okay, thank you very much.